Welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. I'm Ian Joy, and today's guest is a man I've been trying to get for a long time. He's a hard man to track down. He's a busy man. He's our young starlet, NYCFC <laughs> former midfielder, Jack Harrison. Thanks for joining us. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that long. <laughs> it's been a while of trying to get my hands on you, my man, because um, it, it's, of course, been... A long time since you've been away from the club now. Your life sort of changed a little bit. But before we get into all that, how are you doing during the quarantine? How's the family doing? Yeah, everyone's doing well. Thank you. Uh, we spoke about before, just trying to get everyone to stay at home. In the quarantine, it's always hard trying to entertain yourself at home. And uh, for, for us players-wise, you know, it, it's hard because we, we don't know when we're going to start. We just have to try and keep fit and um, do our best to prepare for anything, really. But, no, apart from that, just trying to stay positive, trying to do different things in the house to, to stay entertained. And yeah, that's about it. <laughs> All right, let's go back a little bit. You move to the United States of America. You get drafted, number one, into Major League Soccer. You end up at New York City Football Club via a trade. It seemed to me like life was moving very fast for you at that stage. How was it for you to deal with? Because you went from moving over to the U.S., high school, player of the year, drafted MLS, into Major League Soccer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, a very quick transition, but I think um, every step that I took prepared me well for, for the next next phase in my career. And, um, you know, spending time at Berkshire School, it was, you know, a different experience than I could have ever imagined. Um, but it prepared me well for Wake Forest. And, and what I learned at Wake Forest, although it, it was a short amount of time, um, only one semester, um, but even playing at that standard and, and you know, getting used to that level definitely pr helped me prepare me for the MLS as well, um, you know, despite being injured at the start. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it was a quick transition, but every, every step that I took were, uh, prepared me and I, I always learned something new along the way, which kind of helped me in the next step. And um, yeah, it's just been like that since, really. Yeah, it seems like it's been a bit of a crazy journey. But again, Patrick Vieira seems to have been a key man in your life. How influential was he on your career? No, I mean, he's huge. He's the one that started off, you know, my professional career. He's the, probably one of the first people that had any, any sort of faith and saw any sort, any sort of potential in me at all. And, um, you know, through NYCFC and going through the draft and everything, I've been so grateful for the opportunity that they've given me to, um, you know, to go to New York and to play there two years. It was an incredible experience. And, you know, I, I'm so appreciative of everything that they provided for me. And I learned a lot whilst, you know, being under Patrick Vieira and playing with the, you know, all the stars that everyone knows that were there at the time as well. So, um, yeah, it was just an opportunity that, you know, I've always been grateful and I've always seen it as like the, the kickstarter to, to my professional career. All right, you played under NYCFC 1.0. It sort of changed a little bit now. Back when you were there, there was a ton of stars, as you just mentioned there. Was there one in particular? I mean, we can talk about Villa, Lampard, Pirlo. I mean, you played with some of the best players that have ever played the game in New York City. But is there one particular player that had a massive impact on you personally? Um, I think it's, it's hard to say, really, because... Um, you know, during my time there, they they were all so supportive of not only me but all the young young players as well. They were always trying to help them out. Um, it, it'd probably be difficult between either David and Frank. I think on Frank, um, I've gotten to know him on a personal level, on and off the pitch as well. And he's always helped me out with any problems or any queries that I've had about the game and anything off the pitch as well that um, I need help with. And even you know, to this day, we always. Uh, we always talk and he always makes fun of me on Instagram and all that stuff. So um, now we are keeping in contact with him, but also with David too. I think um, obviously playing with, playing alongside him and just, you know, not, not that Frank didn't have, you know, all the passion and all that stuff, but um, just watching some of the things that he does, you know, as a, as a goal scorer and something that, you know, I want to do myself. It was brilliant to, to be able to watch um how these two players conduct themselves. So I can't really say one or the other, and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings either. So <laughs> I'd probably pick nice between David or Frank. <laughs> You're doing nice, my man. All right, 61 appearances, 14 goals, and then 10 assists in Major League Soccer. That's pretty good stats and, and very good going for a youngster who's just entered into the league. What did you enjoy most about playing in Major League Soccer? Um, I think 
just just playing in general. I think it's you know it's so hard at that point in in my life. You know, you see a lot of a lot of teenagers playing around the world, and you see people talking about oh they have all this potential, but they're either on the bench or they're not playing. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I, that's something that I always saw in Europe, and I was like, wow, like I'm so fortunate to be to be able to play. You know, every every week and and you know i learned so much just through the the game experience and just actually getting out there and playing and i think that's something that i really enjoyed the most is just playing because you had had all the support of nycfc behind me uh, all my family and friends behind me as well and also you know the the fans in in new york were so supportive of me being so young and and you know playing a lot as well they were always encouraging me and um yeah that's probably something it, it's it's a bit bit um, unorthodox really but I think um, I don't know it's just something that stands out for me is that just I was able to play at that that point in my career. Yeah it's so important to be able to get minutes right as you're a youngster mm -hmm. you want to play you don't want to sit on the bench you don't want to have to be patient you want to play and getting yeah. that experience is so vital. So you get the move to Manchester City um, was that always the dream for you was it always I want to be able to play, do my best in Major League Soccer so that I can garner enough interest and get that move to Europe? Yeah, I think, um, you know, me, personally, I've always uh, wanted to push myself as as, uh, as far as possible and uh, to the highest standard possible that I could play at. And, you know, every, every kid's dream is to be able to play at one of the top leagues in Europe or the Premier League or something like that. So that was always in the back of my mind. I wasn't exactly sure. Even at the start, when I first moved to the US, I still wanted... Um, to come back to Europe, that was still one of my aspirations is come, come back and play professionally, but I just wasn't sure how it was going to happen. Um, but yeah, it's just something in the back of my mind. I always wanted to, to come back and um, yeah, I, I knew once, uh, once I went with New York, I knew with the affiliation that it could be a possibility that way, but um, signing with Man City always just kind of seemed a bit weird to me, like, like me going from the MLS signing with Man City, it just seemed a bit strange, but it all happened in the end. And, you know, I'm, now I'm at that stage now where I'm looking for the next thing. And, um, yeah, it was just trying to keep pushing myself, really. Well, you started a trend because there's a lot of players now making that move from Major League Soccer into big, big clubs in Europe. And now you're at Leeds United and you have played for some terrific names. And now you're under Marcelo Bielsa. I mean, this is a tremendous human being, a tremendous coach, great reputation. You know, what, is, what advice does he give you personally? How does he coach you sort of man-to-man, -man, like that type of relationship you have? Um, it's, it's a bit different, really, than I could ever really describe or anything that I've, I could ever expect. I think the relationship he has with the players is, is I, I don't want to say non-existent, but is he likes to keep his distance from, from his players. And there's a mutual respect between the players and, and himself. And obviously, with the reputation that he has and all the knowledge that he has about the game, the way you know he conducts training is is like I've I've never experienced before. And you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to to adapt and get uh, get used to his training methods and his um, like methodology. Really, just uh, about the game and everything, and the, the way he breaks down and makes it so detailed. And um, but ultimately you know it's going to be good for you and so it, it took a little bit of time to kind of adapt and get used to that uh, training regime and um, but I think once you get get around that you understand what what he wants and and um, you can kind of get your head around all of that stuff and you just let 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 yourself play with all that in the back of your mind I think you can really start to build on on different parts of your game which is is what I've I've basically done the last two years um, I, I've gone through ups and downs with with him and um just reset myself going back to the training training sessions and what what he wants out of me as a player is um is what I kind of used to to kind of back myself up a little bit I'm not sure, really sure if I'm making that much sense but oh. he, he likes to have a lot of meetings with his players he uh, before every game he has individual meetings uh, with every player and this is before every game as well it's uh, wow. you go over about 10 minutes of clips of or highlights of the game before and he basically um, explains things that he did well things that he did, didn't do well um, so he shows it on a video exactly you know what what he wants so for you as a player that's great to see because you can see where, what the things that you're doing right and the things that you're doing that is not helping the, the team or yourself at all, really. So 
Um, there's a lot of video analysis and a lot of um, tactical analysis as well. Um, but, you know, ultimately it's only helping myself as a player. I'm just trying to take in as much as possible whilst, you know, like you said, he's got a great reputation and um, to be working with him, I, I feel lucky again. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you have to be a sponge. You have to take absolutely yeah. everything you possibly can from someone like him because he's worked with the best players that have ever played the game. Um, mm -hmm. and I played 10 of my 14 years in Europe and, and I know that feeling, you know, a lot of coaches keep it very professional. They want to do their job. They don't want to be your buddy, where it's a little bit different in Major League Soccer. What about for you personally, going from Major League Soccer where the media, the pressure from supporters is a lot more intense now where you are in Europe. What is the difference for you personally? I mean, you're in an unbelievably tough fan base there in Leeds because the pressure <laughs> is incredibly high. Yeah, I sure know that. Um, <laughs> I think in New York, I was really lucky, you know, being with Patrick, he was so approachable um, and I, I was able to talk with him about, about anything. And, you know, like you said, with the fans and everything, the pressures, everything around it is, is um, you know, it's not as intense as it is here. And I think that's something that kind of took me a little bit by shock. I never experienced it. I always kind of knew that with the, you know, the with the English culture and the football culture in England, um, I always had this kind of hostile uh, atmosphere about it, but I never really experienced it as a, from a player's perspective before. Um, so once I came to Leeds, I think um, I was I was going through a couple rough patches. It wasn't playing too well and not scoring, not doing any assists or anything like that. And you know the fans definitely let me know. So um, that that's something that really took me by surprise, and it took me um, quite a while to to kind of get used to that and. Um, I was really lucky actually having the support from Man City behind me. They they have um, a, a team of people that work with only the loans, uh, loan players. Yeah. So there's um, someone that overlooks everything. You have um, like a, a psychologist, you have a video analysis, like a coach. Um, you have a physio there if you, if you need it. Wow. And you have like a team of people that only work with loan players. Um, so for me, having that behind me as... You know, it was incredible. I could just kind of uh, use those resources to to get through some difficult times in my career that I never really experienced before. And I think working with a, a psychologist there really, really helped me. Um, and in ways that I never really thought that were possible either. And just finding ways to to kind of get through these difficult ob obstacles in my career and just um, looking at things from different angles, just trying to make it work in my favor, really. And I think. Once I kind of got through that rough patch and, and you see if you start doing little things well, the, the fans will, you know, get behind you, get behind you. And, mm. and you know, that's, that's been something that I've kind of carried on from the back of last, year, last season going into this season um, and just kind of uh, kept trying to build little good things up and, or doing something good in the game, even if it's something little, the fans will always recognize that and you know it's it's been great so far this season because they've been so encouraging behind not only me but the team and now we're in you know a good position with you know well who knows only nine games left so with the potential of winning the league so it's like you said it's a lot more intense here but you know it almost once you kind of figure out how to to manage all of that you, you can make it work in ways that can be good for you and as a team and can kind of drive you forward as well so I made a transfer once from HSV Hamburg to the city rival St. Pauli and I remember when I left the last training session I gave my jersey to a supporter who used to come to the, the training sessions you know you know the type of person they come yeah. there every single training session every <laughs> yeah. so I gave my jersey my last ever match worn jersey to this this gentleman and he must have been in his 70s anyway we played the derby game the next time in in their stadium and i'll never forget this it was the warm up and i could hear him shouting here yeah, yeah, in the warm up you know it's quiet we're kind of just getting mm -hmm. ourselves ready and he held up my jersey and had it on a stick and he set fire to my jersey <laughs> <laughs> Uh, some of the fans they're crazy they, they'll do anything they, they live and die for football and that's just how, how they are here <laughs> it's just like a religion for most people like, let's talk about yeah. what you mentioned there a moment ago you, in the last season it was a little unfortunate what happened with the playoffs but this year it looks like you've managed to use that experience and make yourselves better what's been the difference between the two seasons for you um, I think the biggest thing is really last year like, like I mentioned with Marcelo you know, no one had ever really 
um, trained under his kind of regime before or been, a, been used to his training sessions or anything like that. So I think towards the back end of last year, maybe I think some of the players were you know, a little fatigued with everything that was going on. But I think coming into this year, everyone has just been on the same page and you, you know what you're expecting, you know what you're going to get from him and he knows what he's going to get from you as well. And I think just having, having that mentally, it can you know, go a long way. And um, just even when times have been rough this year, just um, having each other's backs on, on the team and encouraging one, one another in different ways has, has kind of helped us kind of get, get back on the right path and keep driving us forward and, and to the position that we are today. And I think that's probably been the biggest thing is just um, knowing what, what is expected really. Yeah. And, and kind of doing everything you can to, to, you know, um, adjust to, to all of, all of those things. So, um, yeah, that's probably been the biggest thing from the two seasons that I've noticed. Do you know this weekend would have been the last game of the season for you guys? And there probably would have been a massive <laughs> celebration for you. Have you guys been talking about that during the Zoom? Um, well, a, a little bit. There's been some talk on the, on the chat and stuff. Obviously, this morning with um, League One in France, um, yeah. they're, they're announcing PSG the winners and stuff. So there's been talk of that too. Um, Good just, happen. And, yeah, <laughs> talk about going down to Cornwall and uh, where the sun is and having our holidays down there. So, <laughs> well, but I don't know. Who knows at this point? So we're, we're just trying to wait and wait to see what happens and yeah, go from there, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, before I go, I know there's a lot of fans that miss you in and around New York City, and they'll want to know this. What do you miss most about New York City? Well, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, you know, as you know, I think the last two years, I've always gone back to New York. It's always, it, I think it always has and always will have a place in my heart. And um, I think just, just being in the city, the vibe is just, um, the, the people, the, the atmosphere, and just, I don't know. I always love just being in the city and what it what it brings to you as a person, and um, yeah. I don't know, that's something that I always admired whilst whilst being there. And one of the reasons why I always go back or try to go back, not maybe not this summer, but <laughs> um, you know, in, in the past two years, I've always gone back to to train, and it's you know as a place in my heart that I'll always be grateful for everything that, that I had there. So um, I, 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 it's hard to say one specific thing, but I guess just the city in general and just how everyone is, is, is just fantastic to be around. Jack, thank you. All the best to you. I mean, good luck with the promotion when the ball finally does get rolling or does not get rolling again. Um, in the meantime, it means a lot that you, uh, you came on here and had a chat with us. A lot of people in New York still talk about you. They miss you. Believe it or not, I voted you as my player that I would bring back from all the players that have been at the club. <laughs> You were the one I chose that I wanted back on the team because of the impact you had on everybody. So thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe, buddy. Thank you, you too. Thank you for having me.